Welcome you all to this evening. Uh, we have a, a great topic ahead of us, uh, hopefully here, if you participate and interact with us. This evening, both um, um, Minister Simone Key and John Blackwood, officiant of the Spiritual National Union, are here with us to lead us on our discussion this evening, which is um, eternal progress of the soul. Uh, what does it mean? What, it's, uh, what, is, what is its purpose and its effect? So hopefully we can get a lot of your thoughts, a lot of your participation as well as what this means for you as we go along this evening. So welcome both to uh, John Simone as you step on forward uh, and take the wheel, John. That's great. Thank you, Daniel. And good evening, everyone. Nice to see you wherever you're joining us from. So it's lovely to see familiar faces back again, as well as some new people joining us. So remember, tell your friends. It's really important. So tell them to come and join us because this is a, a wonderful session. So uh, and hopefully you're enjoying them. We've been running them for a good while now, so I think I've lost track as to how many we've been doing. And of course, every session that we do for our philosophy sessions is on a different subject. So we're always keen to hear from you if you've got ideas for subjects. So please feed them back to Daniel as well, too. So any ideas that you might have. So eternal progress uh, for every human soul we know is a uh, is one of our seven principles. So um, I would like to think of an important principle, but what does that actually mean? And to be fair, I think when we're discussing the philosophy of spiritualism, which remember is based on the seven principles of spiritualism, uh, it's one that I think is least talked about. Uh, and, and I'm wondering why that is, you know, is it because we all think, oh, well, I know what that means. So let's move on to something else that's a bit more meaty. I don't know. So I'm keen to hear from you tonight what you think about it. What does it mean to you? And importantly, as Daniel was saying there, what's its purpose? I'm always very aware that when we talk about life here in this world and life in the spirit world, we say it's, it's very much the same. So it's not that life is that much different. Obviously, we don't have a physical body and the, the material worries that, that we have when in this world but we do get people in this world who choose not to progress. So that's their life choice. So we have people in life, you might know some, who don't want to better themselves, who are quite happy living the life, whichever way they choose, and not changing that in any shape or form. And always wonder what will happen to those people when they go to the spirit world. So will they eternally progress, as hopefully you and I will? Maybe that's what we're thinking of doing. But for what about those people who don't want to do that? So do they need to do that? Or, you know, is that part of the purpose? Or is it just there as, as something that's available to us if we so avail ourselves of that opportunity? Just a thought. So I want to get your thoughts on this tonight. Eternal progress, what is its purpose? What are we progressing towards? So at some point, I would like to think we would achieve what we're progressing towards, but what, what is that? So let's have that chat. And is that the ultimate aim of spiritualism, to achieve, uh, attain some pinnacle? What is that? When will we get there? Do we ever get there? So there's just some of the points we want you to be thinking about and discussing tonight. So hopefully you've got some thoughts going around in your head at the moment, or we're going to sit in silence for the next hour. So it's your choice. So seriously, if anybody wants to kick us off, there's June, great. Oh, so remember, put up your virtual hand, because uh, that's the best way. I think we are all in one screen, so uh, which is great. So you can, if you're struggling with the technology, you can wave frantically. Hopefully we'll see you. But please put up your virtual hand. And as always, if you can keep your microphone on mute until you come to speak, that would be great. So we've got June, first of all. Good evening, June. Nice to see you. Evening, excuse my voice. Oh I've dear. It is my hope that, and the one thing that really keeps me in spiritualism is that there is progress of my soul, but particularly of those whom I have known that most would consider didn't want to progress their soul. 
and was not able to take responsibility for their deeds and actions. That is what I hope for a soul, is that they understand themselves and know themselves and gain that understanding that moves them to take responsibility for the, what they have done. That's not a circular thing because we don't understand the time involved. But if we are considering that we are one body of humanity, then what is humanity if it does not take responsibility for what it does? Mm -hmm. That's always my hope yeah. for those who I feel have not led a responsible life and have not done good things. Okay. It's the one thing that holds me. And what if they don't, June? You know, as, well, I don't as I say, know we've got that, in this world do I? Who... Oh, because course, I have no I concept of their timing. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that is difficult. Mm -hmm. But you say eternal. Yeah. You've given a time span. Mm -hmm. I have no concept of infinity mm -hmm. or eternity. Mm -hmm. But you have labeled it mm -hmm. eternal. Yeah. So. There has to be a progress. You've said so. Mm -hmm. I choose to say that it's the hope of every soul to progress. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see that we progress here. And I don't see that with everyone. Yeah. Therefore, but what is, you're saying is because we could have that opportunity in, in yeah. spirit, basically. You could, yes, slide. that's right. And so as you, you see, change. if it's infinite, you know, it's eternal, effectively, then you know, hopefully the soul will aspire to change at some point. You know, yes. maybe there'll be some sort the, of catalyst for that. But, there is the know. power of change, mm -hmm. even if it's not recognised now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, That's my hope. Exactly. And I, I think, you know, I echo that. I think, you know, as a spiritualist, you know, we're all, I think, spiritualists to try and change our lives in some way and become better people and have a better understanding of life and how we are. Uh, so I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think that's that's part of our development as, as human beings, as, as well as spiritual beings. Uh, but we know not everybody's on that same journey in this world, but maybe in the spirit world, that could be different. So maybe we're influenced in a different way or guided in a different way. So, uh, but that might take people a long, long time, whatever that is in spirit, or others might just jump to the challenge. You never know. So, Carolyn, thanks, June, for kicking us off. Carolyn, on you go. Throw in your thoughts. Yes, hi. Hope, June, you, you, you don't sound very well compared to yesterday, so I hope you're all right. Yes, you sounded a bit um, croaky, yeah. You're very, sounding very croaky, yeah. Um, eternal progress. Maybe we get a choice each time we come here, and I know... SNU doesn't agree with reincarnation, but let's say that we come back to have more lessons. Okay. And maybe sometimes we choose not to progress. Maybe yeah. we even regress to learn something. Um, so maybe you come, we come one time and we do an amazing progression. And maybe the next time we just come along and play. Um, okay. As for eternal progression of the human soul, well, none of us really know that, do we? But I have read that there are seven levels. Uh, the, the Tibetans tend to talk about the 11, 11 levels. Sorry, seven levels. And say we hang out in level three. We get back to heaven and we're in level three. And apparently, from what I've read, when we are ready and when we choose to, um, we can be advanced to level four. And then from level four, we can go to level five. And there are some people who get so advanced that they simply never come back to earth or they, they uh, never, uh, yeah, they never come back. They never take on the physical form again. And they do have this term ascended masters of spirits that are so wise, they may not be angels, but they are so wise that they possibly hang out in level five, six, seven. I don't know. I don't know if seven 
you end up sort of being blended with God. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because none of us really know, do we? No, exactly. Yeah. We don't know anything really when you think yeah. about it. So yeah. that's why we talk about it. So yeah. and, uh, formulate our own thoughts on it. So I think that's I interesting like when you think of levels, Carolyn. So yeah. uh, and whether the seven, eight or 20, I, I yeah. guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's no. just that evolution is there. Uh, but you did mention there, you know, you're eventually, what are we evolving towards, Carolyn? What, what do you see as Well, I believe it's supposedly, from what I read, it's supposed to be sort of sublime bliss, you know, sort of being with God. Um, mm. You know, maybe that could be too much. I mean, maybe if you're continuing a bliss state, maybe that would be almost too much. But then if you're that advanced, Maybe that's where you just want to be. Mm -hmm. and, and eternal is a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I mean, I hope that we all progress because otherwise I believe we do come here to learn a lesson and mm -hmm. to improve. And, uh, but maybe we don't, maybe sometimes we just come here to be and not do anything other than that. That would certainly make sense of people who don't, don't do anything with their life. Maybe it gives them an excuse, I don't know. But, you know, it, it would give some sort of philosophy behind that. I think it's interesting what you were saying there is that, and let's not get into reincarnation, that's not what this is about. But uh, I don't believe in reincarnation, but I believe a soul could have many incarnations, which isn't reincarnation, that's different. So, oh, okay, would you like to expand on that, John? Because well, I maybe come back to that another time because I don't want to get involved right. on that tonight. So, okay, uh, all right. But you, uh, it's kind of similar to what you're talking about because that's why I raised it actually. When right. you were mentioning about, you know, you you could have an experience in this life where you achieve a lot, you do a lot. So, shall we say, you evolve a lot, but then maybe the next experience of your soul is not to do anything. Or regress, I think, was the word that you used. Yeah, yeah. So that would kind of make sense because in order for anything to evolve, I guess it needs to learn every facet of life. You know, we wouldn't know what it's like until we've experienced that experience or that lifetime. Uh, so I guess that could make sense of that. But ultimately, I, you know, I think, as I see it, we're evolving towards God, which is the end game which is pure consciousness just being at one with that consciousness that we call god which is beyond the personality of joe and or carolyn or or anybody else so uh, that makes sense to me so uh, i don't see it necessarily as bliss i just think that's just the natural progression of life that, that that's that's what happens so it's maybe a big pool of God, effectively, from, from which we're all part of and we derive from and return to as well, too. Yeah. So mm, interesting. But we'll come back. We'll, we'll maybe have a night about reincarnation. So uh, cool. <laughs> it, it's, it's something that, yeah, it's not officially an SNU uh, philosophy because we cannot prove it. And that, that's the reason why. Uh, but nevertheless, it doesn't mean to say that you can't have those thoughts and you can't believe that. And it's good for us to share all of these beliefs. So it gives us an understanding of, uh, of a wider philosophy beyond spiritualism too. So great. And we'll see Diane's got her hand up. Thanks, Carolyn. Hi, everybody. Hello. Thank you for uh, having this evening. And yes, an evening about reincarnation would be interesting. Okay, we'll, we'll give that a shot. Another. I'll be off that night. Someone can do it. <laughs> okay. Well, I figured certain things in life for progression. I worked with the family tree. And sometimes you can work with that and see what difficulties you have in your family tree from both sides. I realized I choose my partner. We have the same things to work on or had to work on. And I had to go through this. It had to do with addictions a little bit. So, and I'm proud now that I solved it. And I must say, at least I have progressed with that. And it's probably a big step because okay. I've read also from other authors, mediums, I was reading books. Some say the same thing. We should work on our addictions. We can be addicted to so many things, maybe even our fears. I had a fear of spider, for example, 
if for any reasons you have fears, if you can explain them because you had a fear, you got the fear in this life, then work on it. If you can't explain it, maybe it helps for explaining the reincarnation process or the soul process as well. But I think we always find something to work on. And yes, it is I think it is important to work on something. Okay, Thank that's you. great. Thank you, Diana, for sharing that. Any other thoughts? Please put up your hand, especially if you're a new speaker, relatively new. I think someone wants to come in there. There we go. Yeah, um, just wanted to sort of just share my thoughts about conscience, because, you know, one of the, the, the toughest issues of people who have committed some horrific crimes who are in prison is the fact that they don't have a conscience. And that to me is non-progressive. If you're not, if you don't care about anyone else, you don't care how much you hurt, then that must surely limit any progression in any kind of way. And therefore I, I would have to think hard about what happens to those people when they get to the spirit world. And I would like to think, I don't know anything, but I would like to think that there are minds in that world that would try to help people to see what they've missed out or maybe to show them another side to their, their minds, you know, uh, I would like that. But I also feel too that life is a process of refinement. Mm. And the more we refine, the closer we, we, we get to God. And that's my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Because it's that ultimate union. That's what I was mentioning earlier yeah. with that, which is perfect. I think that's that, that's the right word for it, really. Yeah. So it is perfection. That's what we're striving towards. Mm -hmm. But that's beyond the personality of you or me. We will never be that. So, uh, and maybe that's only well, you speak meanings. for yourself. I don't know about me, but you well, I, I know exactly. Actually, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but you know what I mean. We're, we're yeah. striving towards that, and I think that's important that that becomes our aim. And we're trying to be better people. Yeah. And realizing that you know what we make mistakes, we get things wrong, and that's to be human. Yeah. So, and actually, sometimes going through some really terrible things in our lives, I'm sure we've all experienced that to a greater or lesser degree. You actually not at the time when you're going through it, but afterwards you think, well, I've learned a lot from that. I've learned a lot about me through that experience so and without that experience maybe you wouldn't have progressed in the way that you have mm -hmm. and achieved what you have I must admit that one of the, the things that I really really enjoy it doesn't happen very often but I really really enjoy it when I'm working um, and demonstrating mediumship and it's generally when it's public when I'm, yeah. I'm doing a public demonstration and I'll have someone in the spirit world and I'll ex explain to uh, the recipients uh, it, it generally when there's a family together as well which is mm -hmm. bizarre and I'll say how this individual was when they were on this earth you know and how that what their outlook was like and how difficult they were and really really not very nice people but I'm not yes. saying that you know publicly mm -hmm. and then the spirit world shows me a different side to that individual and how mm -hmm. they've changed since they've been in the spirit world yeah, And that, for me, what I've had to learn from that process is there is someone in the family who is terrified of going to the spirit world when their time is up um, because they might meet them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. therefore, it's a form of healing yeah. by saying yeah. that, you know, this is how they were, but this is how they are now. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you don't have to worry about them and about the thought of them when you go to the spirit world, because they're not going to be that same individual. Yeah. So therefore, in a very naive way, I think, there must be some kind of progression that goes on. Yeah. There must, there must something have changed, even from that time, from this world to the next world. And it, it doesn't matter to me whether it's 20 years, 10 years, five years, or 110 years. That's still no time at all. And that's interesting because, you know, working as mediums, and I've heard you even say this from the platform, when you've 
got a, a spirit in a, a very similar mm -hmm. situation to what you've described. And they've actually said to the person, the recipient, they said, I'm sorry. They've apologized yeah. for what they've done. Yeah. And it's genuine. It's not, and you've been able to follow that and say, there is no way this person would have said sorry when they were here in this world, because that wasn't them, yeah. but they are now. And, and as a medium, I've sensed that, I've felt that, and you can feel the genuine remorse uh, that they feel in spirit. So, and that can be, yeah, time as we were talking about earlier is, is nothing in spirit. So it could be shortly after they, they've passed. So at some point there has to be an awakening or an ability to be able to look at your life in a different way. So, yeah. and I think life and spirit gives us that so. opportunity. Yeah, I, I also hope. believe life here does that too, but perhaps we just don't open our eyes to Choose that. not to look. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. And we, you know, we do dwell on the negativity. You know, when we have a bad time in life and things are pretty awful, we you can't see the better side. You can't see yourself getting out of it. And I think people just reside themselves to that, that, you know, life is just pretty crap and it will never change. Yeah, uh, I think also that there is a, there is a theory by uh, several spiritualists I've come across, a lot of spiritualists I've come across anyway, that think that believes that the spirit world throws bad things at us mm -hmm. for yeah. us to deal with. And I can't go along with that. I believe we make our own heaven and we make our own hell. Yeah. You know, um, I can't believe that someone else would choose to give us a tough time. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just being again naive, but I can't go yeah. along with that. No, I, I, I entirely accept that. I don't believe the spirit world's got that ability no. nor that interest in doing it. But I think what I think is so special is a life here in this world. You know, yeah. if we believe we live it for eternity, whatever that is. Uh, and I, I believe that, uh, then this time we have in this world, a three score and 10 or whatever it might well be, is so precious. Every day of that is precious. It's a learning experience that we will not get anywhere else. And I believe for me as John Blackwood, that's a one-off. That will never happen again. So even though I might go through really horrible experiences, I think, you know, I have to learn something from this. I'm going to try and make the best of it and try and get out of that rather than dwelling in, in the negativity of that horrible experience. So, and I think as a spiritualist, it's taught me to appreciate life here a bit more uh, because I think I, I'm always a bit wary with people who have a really horrible life and you tell them that, well, life is eternal and, you know, when you die, you still live on and you don't have all the worries that you have here in this world. And I think that's really dangerous to say yes, that to I some people. Too. I do because, too. I, I remember somebody saying to me once, they were in a very bad place mentally. And yeah. they said to me, is there, such a, is there such a thing as oblivion in the spirit world? Yeah. Exactly. And I had to be very careful with what I said. Yeah. In response, because they were looking for oblivion. Yeah. And then that's a picture we paint, you wow. know, it just this, this one, you don't need to worry about money and you can travel all over the world just a thought away and you'll see all your loved ones and it's like, hold on a minute, you know, you're, you're painting a picture here, uh, which I think is unrealistic. Uh, and I think, I think also that there's another side to that as a medium, you know, if you paint this really wonderful picture of, you know, of a loved one in the spirit world being in a, in a wonderful place, I mean, it has been known where the person listening to that information, the relative, has taken their own life to be with that individual mm. in the spirit world. Yeah. But there is no guarantee they're going to be there. No. I couldn't promise anybody you're going to yeah. be with them if you do that. I don't know. I don't know the, the, the laws of spirit, mm -hmm. the laws of the universe. I don't know that. No, no, exactly. And it's about... Uh, appreciating this world and this life oh. and trying to make the most of, yeah. the most of it. Yeah. And I think we're one of the few religions that actually teaches that. Perhaps we don't teach it or talk about it as much as we should. But when you really go into the philosophy of spiritualism, that's what it's saying, without a doubt, that life here is precious and mm -hmm. live it to the full and experience. Mm -hmm. You have the potential to do whatever you want to do. And you could be supported in doing that. A spirit would support you if you reach out and ask for, for that help and that guidance. And that's available to you here and now. So the answer is not being go to spirit. It's actually 
continue to be yeah. here in this world. But that's a, a tough call if you're going through a really bad time in your life. You don't want to hear that. So you want an opt out, really, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So, and that's that's the issue. Yeah. Thanks, Simone. Okay. Any other questions or points, comments, anything you want to make? Any other? You know, we did mention before some time ago we were talking about what's the point of life and when you go to spirit, what will it be like? And I did say, you know, I do have a fear that we might be mightily disappointed when we go to the spirit world because it's going to be very much the same again. So could you imagine if you've got this utopian view of everything being wonderful and no worries and then suddenly you wake up shall we say in spirit and you go oh my god it's just the same uh without the physical body what a let down that will be eh so uh so i'm part of my mind i'm, I'm hoping for better but yeah you know, i think we have to be realistic that uh there's that old saying what is so above as below so above and and, and i believe that i believe the the spirit world is just a, a counterpart of this world so, Tim, you've got your hand up. On you go. Hi. Um, yeah, I agree with you, John. Uh, it, it's slightly different, slightly higher perspective, I suppose. I want to transfer a couple of the questions that have been put. Mm -hmm. One of them is, why do some people not get it? And Young, Jungian philosophy, I don't know whether you've run across this, but Carl Jung believes that we have three births in our life. Mm -hmm. The first birth is our actual birth. The second birth is the birth of our ego. But the third birth is the one that not everybody manages because they don't throw off their ego. And the third birth he calls the spiritual birth. Mm -hmm. And that's where you become aware of the, the, there is something more. Mm -hmm. And it also answers the sort of question about the seven principles, which um, the, the last one, eternal progress, open, is, is one where you get to when you've thought about the others, because you've got to a point in your understanding of spiritualism that mm -hmm. there is a purpose, and that purpose is educational. And if, if you start to understand that, you then move from, well, it's not just there, but it's here as well. And you mm -hmm. begin, and it almost that is almost the third birth, because mm -hmm. you realize that there is, a, there is something you have to do here. Um, so that's another thought. Um, the other one is, is I, I'm, I hate to bring up the regression thing, but if you read the book, The Religion of Spiritualism, the very last chapter has a chapter on reincarnation and regression. Mm -hmm. And as spiritualists, we're open to any point of view. But one of the things that they have actually de determined is that we don't go back. It's an upward spiral of progression. And I think mm -hmm. that's very important for all of us to understand because it explains why we bother to come here. You know? Exactly. So, Although I think, to be fair, that the point that was mentioned, I think it was Carolyn that mentioned, wasn't it, uh, about the next stage, although it might be a worse experience, shall we say, or you don't achieve as much as as you could have done, that's not necessarily regression. It's a no, different I, experience. I, I, I agree with you. And, and I, it's very, I, I we're, always tra we're trapped by words. Exactly. And we always think, oh, well, you... you your life should always get better. Well, actually, maybe it couldn't. And it's like us going through a bad time. You know, we could be rich people, have a wonderful life and everything's going really well in our personal lives. And then suddenly that changes. And you might think, I've regressed here. Uh, well, actually, you haven't. You're just going through a different experience it, because you've always, still got the richness of that original experience. Absolutely. It's always positive. It's always forward. You, you can't That's lose right. that that knowledge, as it were. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And the other thing I was going to just occur to me, the, the spider thing, we don't come here when we're born, we do not come here with a clean slate. We have seven generations of people's DNA within us. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think about that, that's over 100 people's uh, preferences, fears, mm -hmm. phobias, inside us, in our DNA. So it's not always a past life in that mm -hmm. sense, you know, a spirit past life. It could actually be in our DNA which is interesting mm -hmm. if you choose to believe it. Yeah. Sorry, Simone. No, I was just going to come in there because I, I'm a great believer in genetic memory because, um, you know, I, I happen to look like my mother. I've got 
unfortunately a lot of my mum's personality I've, I've got her hair which I'm gonna kill her for um <laughs> and you know um and sometimes when people have said to me um oh I was so and so in a previous life I'm not saying I take anything at um a word you know uh, just on somebody's word but when I have been told that I can see how that could be an aspect of my of my history my family's yeah. history that's what I'm saying to you you know yeah, absolutely if you think about that in real terms a child born this year okay has memories from 1812 I mean. think about 1812 1812 Napoleon had messed up in Russia the British were burning down the White House it was quite a significant year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those memories are in it. They're not in a child born this year. Yeah. Mm. In the DNA. And we know that, as you said, memory is carried in the DNA. Mm -hmm. Because it, DNA is a memory. It's a memory of how to produce us. Of course. And it's actually, you, you could develop that and say, is there a spiritual counterpart to that? Yeah. Because I believe that when we come into this world as spiritual beings, we are pure in spirit. So... Hence why, unlike the Christian tradition, the belief you need to be absolved of your sins. Uh, obviously, we don't go down that traditional route as spiritualists. Uh, but I, I take the point, you know, that, yeah, we come with a history. Uh, so therefore, you could say, does that spirit have a history as well, too? Even though it's a new beginning, a new opportunity to grow, and it needs to be given that, that opportunity without any impediment. Which takes us back to the the start of this, which is as eternal beings, mm -hmm. of course it does, doesn't it? Yeah, this, exactly. this, is a, this is just a pilgrimage into a physical world, world exactly. if we accept that we're you know, eternal beings. And if you take it, you know, we were talking earlier about what you're progressing to, maybe that's God, union with God, which is, as I would say, perfection. But then what, what happens beyond that? Do we all just end up in this silo, effectively, of perfection? So is that going to be utilised or recreated in some way? Like en We know energy is never lost, uh, so therefore it just changes its form, changes its existence. So maybe that purity of spirit does ignite new life and a new experience. So maybe, that's maybe. part of the cycle of life. Yeah, maybe. I, I tried to rationalise what we're on and it, I, I just got from creation to creator mm -hmm. so we're on a journey from creation to creator and that's that's about the best you can make of it because I mean, we, it's back to creation again yeah maybe exactly. it is yeah i don't know yeah, well just, do you uh, think, so if, you, if you read any science we're, we're only in a 3d world and they're they're sure there's at least 10 dimensions yeah <laughs> so yeah you know, exactly we're just sure. scraping around in the dark here to be fair i remember one of the the subject of eternal progress and, uh, you know, growing up as a spiritualist and thinking about the principles, it was one certainly I gave least thought to because I thought, well, that goes without saying. And it's kind of natural, as you see, Tim, at the end of the process, you're progressing etern eternally. That's the point of the, the previous six, effectively, yeah, if you achieve them. And I thought, and actually it was somebody, uh, some of you might remember him many years ago, he was a, uh, general manager of that of Finley College, Charles Sherritt. And he was one of the best speakers I, I've ever heard. Yeah. And just with the way he spoke and uh, he formulated these thoughts, I thought it was fantastic. And I remember he, he did this uh, address once and it was in a church that I went to see him in. And he stood up and he said, eternal progress. What if you don't want it? Mm. And he says, it's as if we're all in this bus of eternal progress, but what people, some people get off and just say, I, I can't be bothered. I don't want it. And do you know what? And that's what we've been talking about tonight, but it kind of blew my mind because I never thought that was a possibility. <laughs> but then, of course, of course it is. Some people choose not to progress. And his point was that hopefully they will eventually, but we have to accept that some people, maybe in spirit as well as here, will decide not to progress at this moment in time, whatever that is. So, uh, but then it made me think, thought, well, maybe is there a reason for it being the seventh principle? Is it maybe just because it's a nice thing to add on at the end? Because you have to get something good out of all of the above personal responsibility, compensation and retribution. It's not all fun and happiness, is it really? When you think about it, you know? But so I think the one thing that I love about, I like about that last principle is the fact that it can be today. 
yeah. I don't have to go to the spirit world to progress. Yeah. I can okay. just change my mind and my thinking today. Yeah. And that I don't feel that that is propounded enough within spiritualism. Mm -hmm. It's left until we go to the spirit world almost, you know, even by using the word eternity, you know, mm -hmm. people assume and I would have done a few years ago, that that was when I got to the spirit world, but it isn't. I can change every day of my life. Yeah. Well, that's a good Next point. Time. And maybe, I think you're right. We do need to talk about that more and saying that it's part of this life being special is that we should be progressing as much as we possibly can within it, you know, mm. and almost treating every day as a last, really, mm. you know, so trying to get the best out of it. Yeah. But what is getting the best out of it? Well, it's, you know, I guess it's just, it's living the life you want to lead and it's yeah, new experience. might not be very spiritual. <laughs> but then I, I don't think that's a bad thing. <laughs> I think it's, it's about, I think life's about experience. Mm, me too. And I think it's about, in a way, cramming as much. Well, what I, I, I guess I have an issue with is people that choose not to do anything and they're just wasting their life and i think what a waste you can't progress in any shape or form if that's what you choose to do so do something and even if that you know even if we make mistakes we we progress by making those mistakes because you learn whether you like it or not you do learn from the mistakes that's that's a consequence of making a mistake so you know almost after it happens obviously you know appreciate you know what i've learned a lot from that so therefore i've progressed so uh, I think one thing all spiritualists strive for, I was talking to somebody about this recently, is that we want to change in some way. I think that's something we all have in common. Mm. We want to be different, have a different thoughts or change our lives in some way. And hence, that's why we're looking for spiritualism to spiritualism for guidance, almost as a, a kind of route for change. Uh, and I quite like that. I quite like that thought, actually, because your change, someone will be different to mine. Mm -hmm. So, and your, the experiences that you want to have will be different to mine. Uh, but all results in us becoming a different person in whichever shape or form that might well be. Mm -hmm. And that's not a bad thing. Yeah, Any other cool. thoughts? Mm -hmm. Anybody else wants to want to come in? How are you eternally progressing? We should have a little competition, really. That's see, see who's the most eternally progressed so far. So in this world, sure, Daniel's going to win. He's got his hand up. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm start sure. that. He's <laughs> well evolved. So, oh dear, uh, I am not the basis for comparison. So we'll start with that. Uh, you know, it's interesting because uh, I grew up much differently than than how uh, not in a world of spiritualism, and was told very early on that. Uh, my mistakes was what would condemn me to a specific outcome. And I recall at a very young age that I had already decided I wanted nothing to do with a spirit world or an afterlife because what I had been raised to believe was that that afterlife was only going to be one of suffering um, mm -hmm. for who I was in this world and for the choices I had made or were not willing to change. And uh, I was always told, that's so extreme. I was often told what felt like always because I felt I had accepted this, this prison of, of, of awareness when more so it was this imprisonment that if my life was not looking better, that there was something I was doing wrong. And it was that my life was supposed to look better by being more in touch with God, more in tune with others, more connected to those um, that were, as we can say, higher up or richer, smarter, more knowledgeable. And it really felt confining. And what really, th this, this, this principle captivated me more than, than the others, because what this one told me was that I, I had a chance I had a, a, a chance that I okay. didn't grow up believing. I had an opportunity to be free of what I was told I was going to have to accept. And now I get an opportunity to progress. And that actually, coming to spiritualism, 
really made me or helped me to open up more to spirit world, to an afterlife, if you will, because it now felt that I could participate in, in recreating my life for myself. I was one of those. Why progress? Why? For what? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose? There's no reason for me anymore. So why must I get, be, get better, be better? I can do whatever I want. The consequences have already been decided for me. So to come here and to realize that, and, and this is a word for me that really, I will say when this was shared with me, I cried because it was one of those moments where the awareness became my awakening. I was told by someone, a, a lovely lady, when this was, I had heard a, uh, a talk on um, the soul, eternal progress and such. And I remember this confused feeling and I don't always do great in hiding my face when it comes to my expression. So I had this look on my face and, and she came to me and she says, I see, your, I see how you're looking at me as though I'm, I'm two headed or something. And I want you to, I want to know what is so difficult about this for you. And I expressed, and she said, well, allow me to put it to you in a way you might understand. And she said, despite what you've been through or what has happened or what you've chosen, you still are deserving of being redeemable. And, and that word was strange to me because redeemable was always something that was not going to be afforded to me. And so to hear that I had a chance at the opportunity of being redeemable whatever that was for me by participating in my life again was such an awakening uh for my awareness and as you you've all been talking about this ego of self versus this um progressing towards this different consciousness or awareness um you know it really altered my, my path for me and i like the word different my life's become mm -hmm. different you know, that was, that also was more freeing for me because it allows a, 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 a bigger spectrum because better is so much pressure. <laughs> it's so much pressure to be better, but to be different. Yeah, yeah you're right. Different is, yeah. is, is definitely more achievable for me. So you saw eternal progress then as an opportunity to change, which you thought you were condemned to a life where you wouldn't be able to change. Correct. That was yeah. your... It was an opportunity. Myself. So from your point of view then, Daniel, you know, you've mentioned this before in these sessions. Obviously, your upbringing has been quite different to what many of us have experienced. But you came from, from this philosophy, shall we say, and indoctrination of you're bad, really, and you're never going to get any be better because of your life choices, which is uh, what you're doing. Uh, and that's it. You're condemned to damnation. Uh, and now you're here online with us. So what, what, what was that transition for you? How did you go from thinking an afterlife was a horrible thing, like a jail sentence, to an opportunity for change and for experiencing myself, something new? For myself, the, the process was one of completely resisting uh, the the... Like I said, when I finally rid myself of the belief of anything more or eternal, mm -hmm. I felt more freedom. Yet okay. I will say, though, that there was something within me that's, that told me that was a lie for myself, my journey. Okay. I heard within me, that's a lie. There is eternity. And so then the struggle, that, that disharmony between the mind and the soul was was more painful than the experience of facing the fear that I could be wrong, that mm -hmm. what I was being taught could be wrong, because there was so much fear in that. Yet that pain of disharmony between mind and soul outweighed any amount of that fear that that propelled me to want to seek. And that's what I love to say. I'm definitely a seeker. I want to seek more. What is that truth? What is this truth? Because you say it's truth, is that why I'm supposed to accept it as truth? Or is there further evidence to substantiate this? Or is this further experience I must experience in order to find this truth to be? So, so simply put, the pain was more than the fear. 
Simply put. Mm. But that freedom broke you free, effectively. That yes. thought of, do you know what? I've had enough of this. I need to break free. Yes. And there must have been some sort of catalyst that did that for you. So. Well, yes, we don't have time for that, nor do I want to share a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I will say, too, though, it reminds me of how important, how vital it is the way we speak to others. And here's part of that personal responsibility, mm -hmm. not just yeah. how I choose to be, but how I choose to be with you, how I choose to be with each of you. It's an impact. Had that woman not stopped and looked and noticed and observed this soul that was in pain, mm -hmm. maybe it would have been different. Maybe I would not be here until much later. Mm -hmm. If that, yeah. if even that. So again, it reminds me that spiritual, so there's more to us than simply acting right for self it's also how do i how do i communicate with you and sometimes not even by saying a word i don't need to tell you what to do i don't need to give mm -hmm. you the advice but how do i simply be in the space with you and observe because there's a power in observation as well that mm -hmm. again that lovely woman would had she not done would have altered where my life path currently is yeah my opinion yeah no, that's really interesting but you, you kind of turned it on its head. So, you know, I think for a lot of us, that eternal progress, the last principle for you was hope. So that's what you saw when you saw that, first of all. And you thought, oh, oh my yeah. God, yes. this could change my life. Whereas for the rest of us, when we'd be thinking, okay, well, it's a nice to have. And <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of rounds it all up and makes it worthwhile. But for you, that was pivotal. So that was the, that was the game changer. It was. You. And maybe we need to realize that perhaps more for some people, they just need a game changer in their life to, to spur them into thinking in a different way and changing their life uh, mm. and seeing spirit and God and, and our religion, our way of life in a different way mm. as hope, opportunity for change. Yeah, that's a good thought. I've never thought about it that way. So thanks for sharing that, Daniel. So I think it's, I'm sure we're all at a different stage, obviously, in our and our own pathways and you know there's perhaps something that you've been saying there that resonates in some way with us all just about uh that moment at which we realize that you know maybe spiritualism offers us something that we've not got anywhere else or come I across in our I, life before but I, just coming in on that john i i just think that you're in a very different position from a, your upbringing was in a, yeah, yeah. From a very very different position for most of us mm -hmm. you know and uh, and for for most of us we didn't have that comfort of being brought up in a spiritual mm -hmm. family yeah um you know i've mentioned it before you know i i came my my parents were two different religions so we never had any religious education whatsoever mm -hmm. and they were very anti um telling us we we would have my sister and i were to find we were told and encouraged to find our own religion and I became an atheist well I would wouldn't I um but when I you know I, I look back and I think about you know how how you've been brought up as a spiritualist and felt so comfortable but for the rest of us I believe that the spirit has knocked on the door of our minds at some mm -hmm. point our own spirit mm -hmm. and, and and almost saying listen to me recognize me acknowledge me but do something about me. And that's where the transformation comes within us, where we then start to use our awareness and our sensitivity rather than going on in this materialistic world, you know, and just you know, sticking with what, you know, everybody else does and there's something different about us. And, and one of the things I, I've had to face, and I will use that word um, over the, the last few years is, no matter how frustrating it might be as for us with our families and our friends that we can't share our knowledge we can't share our philosophy with them they're not interested I have to recognize they're not ready for it and that is yeah, what, so that, yeah, that's, that's what makes me feel I can live with that yeah because there was a time when I when I was a spiritualist in, in the beginning 
Um, and I'm like we all were, you know, and still are very excited about my religion. I wanted to share it with my family to help them see what I believed in. And I thought really as, as family, they should want to know how I think. They should want to know how I feel. They just weren't interested. And it got me upset. But now I look back and I think, no, it doesn't matter. It yeah. really, really doesn't matter. This is just such an individual journey, yeah. you know, that you've just got to do it in your time, in your way and not expect people close to you to understand you in this way. Mm. And that's, yeah, that's, that's, it. that's, that's, that's very true. It. And I think, you know, again, we could talk about it another time, but, you know, my upbringing as a spiritualist, I don't necessarily see it as a benefit uh, oh, okay. if, if I'm perfectly <laughs> honest. Okay. Uh, because I feel I've missed out on a lot of things. Oh, okay. uh, what well, one thing that I, it, I think it's the t- stereotypical example of you always want something that you've never had yourself and that experience. And I, I hear people like yourself constantly telling it, telling me, you know, that time when suddenly they woke up, they became aware of spiritualism and it just felt right to them. Mm. That was their new life. That was their new religion. And, oh, my God, they've been waiting all their life for this experience and this this dawning, this moment of recognition. I've never had that. <laughs> and and actually, do you know, I long for that. There's, there's part of me, but it's only because you all tell me about it. And I think, oh, I quite like that as well, too. Had you not have said that, I probably would never have given it a second thought. Yeah. But I'm sure all of you, more or less, have had that experience of, oh, my God, this is the moment I knew I you often say, I feel at home. I feel with people that understand me that, uh, you know, I found I found my home effectively, the place where I belong. And I think, well, I've always been in it. So I've just accepted that's what it is. Uh, but you always want, I guess, something different to what you have. And I suppose spiritualism and being brought up in it, it is no different. So that feeling, that, that knowing, uh, I think is really important. And I, I would love to get that feeling that all of you have. I, I've never experienced that. So, or walking through a, a door of a spiritualist church or a centre, as many people say, for the first time, and they just get that feeling. I thought, well, I've never had that in my life because I was brought up in it. It was the natural thing to do. So there was never that moment of recognition or dawning. Uh, and likewise, you know, I would never, I never even thought, oh my God, you know, I've got this wonderful philosophy. I want to share it with everybody. I'm going, I don't care actually whether you like it or not, you know? <laughs> and again, it's just because that's how I was brought up. Mm-hmm. And I, I accept that everybody's allowed to have their own views. And if you don't agree with me, if you think I'm weird, well, I don't care. <laughs> Get on with it. So uh, I guess we'll end up at the, sa- at the same point, but just coming to it from a different angle. So mm-hmm. I remember being in America years ago 30 years ago now and this woman and I was working as someone will recognize this when you're working as a medium and uh, and you're traveling and it's 24 7 and you get to that breaking point and I remember this woman was she's a very good friend of mine and uh, she was driving me somewhere I says, you know what it must be really really wonderful to just always see a spirit and you know just feel their presence and have that in your life and she says isn't it great to hear them and and I actually said this out loud, which I shouldn't have done. I said, I've been trying to get them to bloody shut up for years. <laughs> so I'd had enough. You know, you just need to break away sometimes. And she just burst out laughing. She says, oh, well, there's a reality check for me. So, <laughs> so it's interesting just how our lives take us in different directions, I guess, you know, and how you you perceive spiritualism. So yeah. there's Diana, got her hand up again. So let's come in. Later, come in. It is true, it is hard to be a spiritualist and share with others. I have I've come from a Catholic background and my mom is very Catholic. She doesn't believe much in it. And my dad is a little bit more opener. So I, through my development, I was able to turn into animal communication And we learn with animal communication about telepathy, how it works. I think it's a very good teaching lesson. And I was able to get my parents a little bit more interested just in the fact of telepathy. I mean, others search for ETs 
I think we are here on earth. We have the animal kingdom. We have the plant world. We can learn to communicate with them. And it is so fabulous that we can eventually, if we're interested, to go that direction. So maybe it's a little hint. And sometimes you also, I started to realize with Catholics, you have to use their language. Mm -hmm. With others, you have to use the other language. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's all the same, but they don't know about it. But just yeah. use their language. It helps. When you speak about angels or saints or whatever, my mom accepts angels. Yeah, no we get it. Catholics get it. Yeah, I'm not going to tell her, talk to your spirit guide. I mm -hmm. said, talk to your guardian angel. That mm -hmm. works. Mm -hmm. But it's maybe all the same. So who knows? Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting point, Diana, because I, I live in Scotland and uh, certainly Catholics that I know who become spiritualists get that very easily. They understand spirit. They understand that, that communion with spirit. They have no issue with that at all because they're taught about their guard, guardian angels and spirit are always, or mm -hmm. spirits, or mm -hmm. these saints are always with them and guiding them. Uh, but the other end of that, you've got the Protestant church here in Scotland that's very much against that. So if you come from that faith or that background, they really struggle with this whole idea of guides and spirit influence because you're yeah. not taught yeah. that as a child. Yeah. So it's yeah. a very different that's perception, true. which is really interesting. So mm. certainly I found Catholics are, are much more receptive to spiritualism mm -hmm. uh, than perhaps other faiths are. So interesting. So. Thanks for sharing. And I think, yeah, it's important that we talk about communicating with each other, but, you know, communicating with animals and uh, certainly our pets as well, too. Just think about that, that they are souls, they are spirit in the same way as you and I are. So let's and not it forget helps. that. And it's really, uh, if some are afraid of spirits, if it's about animals who are here mm -hmm. and they can learn something, maybe yeah. it's a little hint. Of course. A little opening. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Well, we're almost out of time. I don't know if any of you get any comments or questions to make before we finish. Anybody maybe even who hasn't spoken yet. So hope you've all been able to take something from this evening. So uh, we managed to fill an hour with eternal progress. So there you go. So uh, that's fascinating. Uh, so, so maybe not only is that nice to have as a principle, it's actually essential in our lives. Uh, but perhaps we should be working on it now uh, as well as hereafter. So let's get busy. Let's make that progress, that change today rather than wait until tomorrow. Perhaps that's the moral from, from this evening session. So, Okay. Just, just want to say thank you to all so much for joining us uh, today. It's really great that you've uh, come online and supporting us. Our next um, philosophy evening is going to be um, on Wednesday the 18th of May at 7pm UK time and our subject for philosophy is is there a spiritual point to suffering and, and, and outside of that if anyone does have a subject you would like us to discuss just just send me a, a line just email me and we can bring it up in the other months coming up okay so um look forward to seeing you on the 18th of may at 7 p.m uk time and thanks again every one of you for joining us tonight it's really good thank you good night everyone good night see you all soon bye take care